Ubisoft is on an absolute freefall right now, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the whole situation and obviously tying it back to Rainbow Six Siege. So to help you visualize this freefall that I mentioned, take a look at Ubisoft Entertainment's stock chart here. Now I may be a business major, but it doesn't take a business major to tell you that this is an absolute plunge of stock decay for Ubisoft. I don't think I could personally say it better than this quote from Pocket Gamer, which states, Ubisoft has been steadily declining since February 2021, down from $94.98 per share to $10.13 per share at the time of writing, and since September 2019, Ubisoft's share price has fallen by 86.5%. Now if you're not a numbers person, basically Ubisoft is in some deep shit right now. In 2023, we saw one of the company's worst financial years in its history as their stock fell over 50% from its peak and shaving off billions of dollars from their perceived market value. And whether you're watching this video as an avid Rainbow Six Siege player like most of my viewers are, or you have played other Ubisoft titles, you would know that Ubisoft relies on stale gaming franchises that are riddled with bugs and microtransactions that leave us, the gaming community, frustrated for the lack of a better word. And I mean at this point, it's not just the gaming community that's losing faith, it's evident that investors are done dealing with Ubisoft's uninspiring string of missteps over the years. And unfortunately, Ubisoft is a textbook example of reusing a stale formula. And especially looking at Siege, there really has been an evident lack of content and innovation for years now. I mean, in the entirety of year nine, we're only getting one new operator, whereas we used to get eight new operators per year. And then I don't wanna travel off the beaten path too much, but do you guys remember Hyperscape, that game that was like supposed to be the next big battle royale game, but ended up being a complete unmitigated disaster? If I had to guess, you probably haven't thought about that game in forever, and for a good reason. I mean, it shut down in less than two years after its launch. Ubisoft's marketing strategies clearly are just awful, and to an extent, as a AAA company, you can rely on your name to market a game. Like, it's, it's totally understandable. Like, you know, if Rockstar went out there and decided they weren't going to market GTA 6 at all, it would still be the highest selling piece of entertainment media in human history because everyone knows they're buying a reliable game from a reliable company. But the differentiator is that Ubisoft's reliability just isn't enough to sell 15 million copies of Assassin's Creed anymore like it used to be because their game quality is hardly redeeming at this point. And going back to Hyperscape for just one more second, I promise, Ubisoft is trying to be an industry trend follower and capitalize on the battle royale surge like how, you know, Hyperscape was at the time. It's really hardly any different from X Defiant considering it's just an Overwatch and Call of Duty fusion. But Ubisoft is a gaming giant, like they are supposed to be the ones setting the trends, not attempting to follow the trends and miserably failing at that. And now they're trying to follow the mobile gaming trend too, so like yeah, overall, just kind of going back to my main point, the beauty of Rainbow Six Siege when it came out was that it was so entirely different from any other FPS game at the time with the tactical and realistic side of things, you know? And over time, they have completely lost their identity and, you know, they've added a gazillion pointless cosmetics like every other game trying to be Fortnite. They're clearly trying to get their money wherever they can get it, like in cosmetics, because selling their games to new buyers just clearly isn't cutting it. And let's not even act like this is all entirely on Ubisoft's business operations, because it's really not. They have had workplace misconduct scandals, leading to replacing top executives, and it's evident that the damage has been done internally, and the company's morale and culture has been shot. At this point, it's hard to tell if the current management has the vision or leadership to renew the internal culture at Ubisoft, because that is the first step to a successful future for the company, and I mean that may sound tacky, but you can't expect people to want to work for a company that just doesn't know how to manage employees, you know, nonetheless they're video game franchises. Ubisoft is clearly operating at a deficit at this point, considering all of their empty promises and delayed games. I mean, they literally just delayed Assassin's Creed Shadows to like spring of 2025 or something insane like that. And, and then there's Star Wars Outlaws too. I, I feel like I'm all over the place because I really don't have a script here, but there are so many examples of Ubisoft screwing up that just keep popping into my head. But yeah, so Star Wars Outlaws, Ubisoft literally admitted that the game was a massive letdown, which wouldn't take a genius to figure out considering it barely sold a million copies. And the game didn't even get reviewed terribly. Like people said it 
it wasn't even that bad, Ubisoft just sucks at marketing, and no one feels the need to buy the game, even though Star Wars clearly has a massive following, and this is the first non-EA Star Wars game in like two decades, so the potential for immense success was obviously there, but another example of Ubisoft just dropping the ball on it. And every company has their failed launches, so I'm not trying to say Ubisoft is failing simply because of that, but just look at how other companies handle failed launches, you know, a prime example of this is Cyberpunk. No one would refer to Cyberpunk as a flop now because it ended up being great, but on launch, it was an overwhelming and unanimous fail of a game. I mean, the game was so bad that Sony took it off the PlayStation Store entirely just a few weeks after the release. And then, you know, the game's developers, CD Projekt Red, they went back in, they fixed the bugs and the issues that players complained about, and now the game is overall viewed positively, and actually it got back on track for initial sales projections too. And that's something that Ubisoft probably couldn't even fathom unfortunately, which shows. But now looking at the future of Ubisoft, it isn't looking too good. Just a few days ago, the minority shareholders of Ubisoft, Tencent, and the Guillemot family announced that they were considering a buyout to take the company private, which is really the only reason that the stock isn't at an all-time low right now. And I mean, if this is something that really does happen, we will probably find out way sooner than you may expect, considering how quickly Ubisoft is plummeting by the day. For us Rainbow Six Siege players, it is definitely concerning. Ubisoft continues to reassure us saying, you know, they're going to make it to 100 operators and whatever else, but it really seems like they are limping their way to that point. And I know they want to get there, and obviously as an enjoyer of Siege, I want to see them get there too, but I'm not sure if they will physically, financially be able to get there and support the game for that long. And especially if they keep this lack of content trend up, I mean, we're at like what, 74 operators in the game right now, something like that. And at this rate of adding one new operator per year, I'm literally going to be damn near 50 years old by the time they reach their goal of having 100 operators, and that's not even an exaggeration. And then it goes without saying, but all the cheating problems in Siege, like, you know, this game is just overrun by dishonest players and the loyal players are dropping like flies and rightfully so and that 100% has contributed to this decline in Ubisoft stock considering Rainbow Six Siege is one of their biggest titles and their average active player base is no longer peaking with the releases of new seasons like how it used to so they can't even rely on the hype of a new season anymore like how they could at one point. Ubisoft definitely has opportunities to bounce back with the amount of titles they have put out recently and, you know, the amount of titles they have on the horizon, but they can't stick to the same formula that hasn't been working because otherwise they are destined for failure. So yeah, Ubisoft is pretty much beyond fixing at this point with this current allocation of resources, so there needs to be some major changes that happen internally, like I said, or else they are going to be looking at liquidation, and who knows what that will look like for the future of Ubisoft franchises like Rainbow Six Siege. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about the whole situation, or maybe what change you guys think needs to happen, if any. I'm always interested in hearing your guys' opinions on things like this, considering the gaming community always has such passionate opinions. But yeah, thanks so much for watching, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.